Definitely the date is the 21st of the third month of the year 2023. And it's just a day after we had a moment yesterday. Talk about demonstrations. How did that impact business? Since we are on business today, we'll be tackling that. But apart from that, today a lot has been happening. The corporate world, we have seen there is an inquiry on what was going on in certain investment and the Capital Markets Authority is on the chopping block. What did they miss to see the situation that is ongoing in sight? And apart from that, we'll be looking at the issue of the dollar. That was the biggest story last week. We saw government go into the government-to-government -government importation of oil to sort of ease the pressure on the availability of dollars in our market. The question is, what is the status quo as a speak after yesterday? Now we come back to the real issue. I'll be having a conversation with one of the traders that imports and how this dollar shortage is touching on them. Welcome to business today. I'm Noah Kipkimboy. Let's take a look at the markets. Starting us off, the Capital Markets Authority has come under sharp criticism of the handling of the site and investors who are on the verge of losing their investment. Members of Parliament from the Public Petition Committee now say the Capital Markets could have done better in handling the matter. Jimmy Mbogo was there and joins us with more. Good afternoon, Jimmy. All right, now very good afternoon to you. And as you rightfully said, today the issue that we was being discussed in Parliament is the issue of Saiton and the investment that Kenyans lost uh, from now, uh, and that uh, we have the, uh, the acting chair for this session, that is Moshimiwa Walter Weno, who chaired this session that uh, was engaging with the Capital Markets Authority as well as the receiver manager. Now, what we can say for sure is that. Uh, the chances of 100% recovery of the funds that the investors put in this is uh, looking very bleak in terms of uh, the receiver manager saying that uh, their efforts are being frustrated and of course we'll be giving you all those details in our subsequent bulletin. But for now, I want to engage the chair. Uh, Moshimo, thank you so much for speaking to us. Mm -hmm. First of all, it was quite an engaging session that we have witnessed here. One of the things that we want to understand from the responses that you have uh, seen from the CMA and also from, from the receiver manager, are you confident about what is going to happen to the investors and uh, people who put money in, uh, in Saiton? Yeah, one thing I've realized since uh, I started uh, dealing with this is that uh, investors will get something. They will get uh, some refund. We are headed somewhere. Uh, just like you have mentioned, I am not sure whether they'll get 100% refund, but I believe investors who put their money into this uh, thing will have to get some money back. All right. Now, earlier on, you were engaging with the Capital Market Authority and what was coming out of, the, of that session particularly is that uh, CMA might have dropped the ball in, uh, in some instances. I realized with CMA that uh, I don't know whether it is about regulations or what, but they have an issue. They are more, uh, uh, they, they, re they, are re they react more than being uh, re proactive. Yeah. They, they, they follow things after they have happened. But I believe as a regulatory body, they should have ways of, you know, stopping these things or knowing some of these things before they happen. So uh, CMA, we do not expect much from them. Yeah. Uh, they seem frustrated from the discussion we had here. But uh, having listened to uh, the receiver manager, I think investors can have some hopes. Okay. Yeah. Now, Moshimua, before I let you go, and, and, and of course, uh, when you hear the Capital Market Authority saying that uh, Cytone has tried to, uh, make, to, 
to put efforts in place to gag them from speaking about this matter. Doesn't that sound suspicious to you? Um, we would want to interrogate it more, but like I said, uh, you, 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 you may have realized that uh, Capital Markets Authority, they came to cry. They actually never came here with solutions. They came and they started by telling us that they, 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 these people, they have been taken to court by Saiton and they have so many case, case, uh, cases, including even their MD being taken to court personally by Saiton. Yeah. So they are not helping as much. And I think it is an issue that as a parliament we need to look into. What, is it, what are we supposed to do as parliament to, uh, make, to, to empower this regulatory body? Because we have so many entities nowadays, so many people who are coming and are pretending that they are able to help members of the public, you know, invest, and while they end up just conning those members of the public. All right, lastly, uh, Mashimiwa, what should Kenyans expect? People who put money in Saiton, what should they expect? Of course, we are hearing uh, about this frustration. These are people who have been crying. They have lost... Uh, uh, they have lost millions that they invested hoping to earn something from it. What should they expect from this committee? We expect to, of course, do the right thing. We want to have a win-win situation. You know, at this point, I also do not want to say that uh, we have established that uh, Saiton conned anybody. That is why we are still asking for documents, for audit. We want the... Um, uh, receiver manager to conduct a proper audit to come back to us and tell us whether these first, these properties that Saiton are saying are available are they really there and what is the value of those properties then we look at the value of the properties vis-a-vis -vis the amount of money that the investors are claiming they put in there yeah. then we'll that is the point that is the point where we'll be able to say that uh, somebody lost money or not so at this point mark my word I do not want to say yeah. that Saiton has conned anybody. Let us interrogate these people, let us get to the bottom of the matter, and then now we'll be talking about facts. That is the point. After we are done with interrogating everyone and seeing all the documents, then we'll be able to know whether it is true that money got lost or it is only something that happened the way um, Saiton management, Saiton CEO came and told us that he was affected by COVID. Yeah. So we want to know whether <laughs> whatever happened happened as a result of COVID or there was a scheme to swindle, you know, to get money from, to con members of the public. So we'll get, to, you know, we'll get to the bottom of all these things after listening to every player in it. All right, thank you so much, uh, Moshimo, for taking the time to speak to KTN. And of course, Noah, we'll be giving you more details about what transpired during this session. And uh, also during our 9 p.m. bulletin, we should have uh, more comprehensive details in terms of what has been said during this session. But again, just to remind you that uh, from the receiver manager, one of the biggest uh, thing that they are seeing about all the different uh, facets of, of Cyton is that uh, there are the same partners that are all in, in all, uh, all, all the boards, which is uh, quite interesting. And of course, uh, the fact that uh, the fact still remains that uh, some people have lost money during uh, the investment that they did, but uh, what next? Or, so the question that uh, we will be asking, of course, uh, the chair during the, the next session is, uh, was Saiton uh, too smart or did CMA drop the ball? For now, back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, Jimmy. That update on Marta Saiton. But moving on swiftly to recap uh, Marta's businesses yesterday as the parties continued across the city. Yesterday, that is on Monday, many businesses were forced to remain closed over fear of looting and property damage. But even for those who remained open, business was sluggish as many opted to stay away from the city center and its environs. A walk through the city of Nairobi on Monday and you would be excused for thinking that the weekend had dragged on into Monday. Empty parking slots and closed shops were the order of the day as many stayed away from the central business district. <laughs> many business owners opted to keep their doors shut, fearing that their investments would be damaged or looted by elements seeking to take advantage of the demonstrations. Now, the closure of businesses meant that many had to forego any potential earnings. It is in these earnings that led the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa to appeal to the cancellation of demonstration. As a result, this morning, because of lack of business in the CBD, the country has lost almost 2 billion shillings in terms of business. And this is money that I should, should have been circulating in the economy. The economy had begun showing signs of recovery. 
and we were getting a lot of permission from international financial players and no other partners but the events that are being organized by the opposition is not good but despite the protests there are those who open their shops in the hope that they would be able to make something despite the chaos so what drove many kenyans to the streets and made them forego their earnings for many the answer is simple the high cost of living, driven by high fuel and electricity prices, as well as food prices. In the maandamano yangu ya kwanza, sijai attend maandamano ju, sijai ona kitu ya kuandamana hapo nyuma, lakini saizi vile nimefinyiliwa kama single mother, nimeona eri ni andamane, kwa sababu maisha imekuwa mbaya. Tuataka serikali tushukishia unga, maisha ikuwe chief venye ilikuwa, maisha irudi normal, school fees imepanda, maisha imekuwa ngumu. But while many Kenyans grappled with different motivations and whether or not to take part in the demonstration, the cost to the economy could hurt its investment prospects. In the past, Kenya has borne the brunt of political risk with the economy slowing down during election years. Now, the aftermath of the election has also seen investors share away from investing in the country as they await the tension to die down. Last year's election were compounding factors for Kenyan, which is still trying to shake off the aftershock of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've improved our business continuity plan from then. We will revoke our business continuity plan uh, for, for, for Monday. It is part of our DNA and it's part of our business. Jimmy Mbogo, KTN News. Definitely. Now the big question is, what is the correlation between the economy and social unrest protest and now ladies and gentlemen drum rolls for the first time from the economy desk i'd like to introduce james apollo sir welcome is one of our reporters Thank you so looking much. sharp as always uh, you you're about well. to take us through the correlation between the economy and social unrest yeah definitely talk, talk to me man and it's so unfortunate